Oh, welcome to game four of this medium games match. Uh, Ketra against Jackal. Let's take a look at this kingdom. We've got Trashing. We've got Masquerade for Trashing. Well, not as much Stone Nason, but it technically trashes. We've got Port for Villages. We don't really have Draw other than Masquerade. So that's something to watch out for. You probably want to try to get pretty thin here. We've got uh, Talisman for Gains. Not quite sure how that... Uh, yeah, we should welcome draw if your deck is all grand markets. Uh, patron feels nice. Like, Patron Masquerade seems like a pretty good opening. Um, on, like, a 2-5, you might go Fisherman. On a 2-5, I'm probably going Fisherman Masquerade. Um, I could go Fisherman Stone Mason for Masquerade Wishing Well. That feels awkward. Um, how does... How does Stone Mason work with fishermen. I think you could stone mason for one fisherman, but not two. Like you gain the first fisherman and now fisherman costs five. So you have to gain another stone mason. So that would be pretty bad. Well I think I on three four I'm pretty happy with um masquerade patron. Patron starts building up the villagers potentially you know not too huge of a chance of colliding you know, just if you draw a mask first and then draw the patron dead. Um, I'm honestly probably going to try to pick up a second mask. Does Talisman also only gain one fisherman, or does Talisman gain two fishermen? Like, there is some potential to get a Talisman in order to just gain a ton of ports and wishing wells. Um, and I kind of want a ton of ports and wishing wells. Wishing well could potentially draw a little bit. Um, I want to get rid of every single copper in my deck and buy Grand Markets. And then, um, depending on the game state, either buy Provinces or more likely, if you can get in, in good 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 shape, um, you know, run down the estates. There's also three pile potential with Stone Masons. That is um, a significant thing to watch for. So... The, the Soothsayer interacts poorly with Fisherman. Um, I don't think I want a Soothsayer in my deck in this kingdom. I want, as I said, a couple of ports, a couple of masks, a bunch of Wishing Wells, Fisherman as needed, and then a whole bunch of Grand Markets. And the, the Soothsayer and the Golds kind of get in the way of that. And again, I think just as uh, and the how does how does colonnade work when you buy? Yeah. Oh, so uh, Katrick here can get uh, stone mason double grand market, huh? Stone mason double grand market. Nice. Uh, this turn is not nice, but that last turn is pretty sweet. Stone mason double grand market feels pretty sweet. And now they can just trash a copper and end their turn. It's fine. You feel pretty good about having both Grand Markets, Ports, Masks, and the rest of the shuffle. Um, as Ketra, I would buy the second mask there just for the... Sorry, as Jackal, I'd buy the second mask there just for the, the Colonnade points. Although, getting the Ports does seem useful as well. So, Fisherman gonna run. Stone Mason's gonna run. Port's gonna run. Potentially, Well's gonna run. Like the, this thing could, could could end quickly here. Um, something to watch out for. Again, I like the early second mask and ports just so you can get thin as fast as possible. Um, I, I honestly probably wouldn't play with any fishermen unless I had a weird like two five opening where I needed to play with them. Um, like once I had grand markets, I might pick up some extra ones or in weird cases, like when I had a $2 hand. Um, but that seems unlikely. Um, I would have gone Masquerade Port, sorry, Masquerade Patron, and then probably picked up Ports and Masquerade on my second shuffle, and then um, start stone masoning for Wishing Wells and stuff after that. And then if I turn you know, 8, B, 8, 8, 9, B, be pretty thin. Um, at least is the goal. Hopefully I don't bottom deck stuff. And once I'm pretty thin, then I can uh, start to 
um, start to get two grand markets every turn. And once you've gotten two grand markets, then getting three the next turn feels pretty, pretty doable. So this is 10. Um, so if you get a single grand market, they could go stun this and double grand market. Um, that adds two stop cards to their deck. They've thinned two stop cards this shuffle. I think I want to take a pause here as Ketra and go for Stone Mason, double Masquerade, and then Ports, or maybe just Ports, double Mask, Ports, Mask, Wishing Well, something like that. Um, just like take off one turn from getting Grand Markets, given that I've got a 2 0 lead, and really focus on adding in multiple Trashers to my deck. And then hopefully the Mask draw. Um, and then having two masks and a stone mason, I can start to trash three cards or shuffle, and then I'll be completely thin. My deck will be entirely grand markets, and I can just buy out the state pile and win the game that way. Somebody got a second mask. Um, looks like Jack did. Um, yeah, last turn. So with four here. Um, you've got two ports. I would either take a patron, uh, ports, or masquerade. All of those seem reasonable to me. Um, with two ports, I think you can go with two masks. Or just one mask here. That seems okay. Um, yeah, well, you've got the suits there too. So maybe you just grab, grab ports. Uh, in my ideal envisioning of this, like patron, masquerade, if you draw them in the right order, you can bank a coffer or a bank of villager periodically, um, which is quite nice. And wishing well could technically flip over patron, but that's a little bit of a uh, asking for quite a bit. So one thing I'll say is Theodom says silvers and conquest says silvers, but I don't envision any way you can actually make that combo work on this kingdom because you need to be able to buy multiple silvers in addition to the conquests. Yeah, this is a bit sad. Um, again, this is what happens when we get the stun racing for double grand markets. We have like <laughs> these amazing grand markets in play and also these stun masons and coppers in our hand. Um, again, I would I would trash a copper here and grab uh, ports and uh, mat another mask. Um, it doesn't help us if we have eight grand markets, if we can only play three a turn. Um, I would be playing every single grand market I have every turn. That being said, I feel like Katra is pretty pretty far ahead on this kingdom. They have four to zero in the grand markets right now, leading me to say they don't need to grab two more. They can they can take a minute to add a little bit more reliability with ports and mask, and they've got ports and mask coming up in the next hand anyway, so they're likely to be able to draw through this ports and mask. Um, it looks like though they're just gonna oh soothsayer. Stone Mason. I am confused. Stone Mason for double mask and a soothsayer. I think they need to get another pair of ports there. They've got too many terminals now. They're gonna have no villages in this next shuffle and three terminals, four, five terminals, <laughs> uh, something like that. Uh, weird. Hopefully they draw into this and shuffle a little bit with these two ports. But I think that's, that, that Soothsayer is, is basically useless for their deck. They just, that could have been ports, and then I completely agree with what they bought. Um, because you can pass Stone Masons, and you can pass Coppers, and then trash your Stone Masons when you get a Copper back. Um, it, the Soothsayer is just not doing anything. They're not able to draw a deck, so the gold doesn't give them much value, and they don't have enough terminals, they don't have terminal space, given that they have now... Um, seven terminals and two villages, if I'm counting that correctly. Three stone masons, three masquerades, and one suits there. So they can only play three three of those terminals a turn. Uh, now again, if you've got ports that turn, then maybe this turn they're able to trash three or four, you know, a couple things with all their masquerades, and they're able to get that going, then maybe you get a suit there once your deck is clean, just to add a little bit of extra payload. But draw is so, so limited here. Looks like they're going to get at least a couple of trashes off this turn, which is good. 
past the copper, I think. No, no, past the estate, because you're getting the estate back that you passed. Then you can stow a mason and a copper and buy ports. This is a bigger, reasonably productive turn. They've still got three more grand markets down there. Um, they've also got three stone masons, though. <laughs> uh, we, can, we can look to the end of the game and stone mason grand markets into duchies or something. Like, it feels bad to stone mason grand Martin, but grand market, but at least coming to the end of the game, that seems very, very possible. I don't... They got a fisherman and a port. I would have trashed there over the fisherman, but it's probably pretty close. I don't know what I'm passing here. I'm probably passing the masquerade. You've got three. You don't need three. I would not have stone mason for that masquerade turn. I would have gotten like masquerade port on my nine and been okay with it. Um, or maybe stone mason for masquerade wishing well port. Um, it's just important we don't wildly diverge from our our too many terminals for villages and. I mean, Jackdaw has four terminals and two villages, so they have, have similar problems. Um, I would, again, I, I didn't like the stone mason, the soothsayer by when they bought it, so I would stone mason the copper here and buy ports and say, the soothsayer buy was a mistake and I don't need to play it. Even if they play it, I'm still buying ports because I, I have, you know, seven terminals and four villages now. So I want to get six villages, make sure I can play all my masquerades in a turn, pass all the curses and estates and, and get completely thin. Um, let's look at the trash. Um, yeah, so we've got only nine things been trashed here. Again, I, I prioritize myself trashing much more. The same with the previous kingdom with the sauna stuff. I prioritize getting more saunas just to get more trashed faster um, and passing up buys sometimes to, to trash. So Jackal has one, one grand market now. And we see sort of the soothsayer gets you the golds, which can get you the grand markets. So it's quite a bit slower than the Sort of the, we'll say the dirtier build, or Tetra has all the copper still, but is able to get eight money in play and do stone mason for double grand market um, in that respect. Um, but quite a nice turn here from Jackdaw. Um, this is on a clean shuffle, pretty much, too. So um, they've had two masquerades for longer. So I assume here you're stone masoning for double grand market. Well, you can play all your money then. You could stone mason for double grand market and buy ports. That feels actually super dangerous. I'm not quite sure what they want to do here. They're very much risking a pile out on this turn. Um, with stone masons around, you just have to watch out for every possible pile out. And there are a lot of possible pile outs. Um, stone masons are very cheap to pile out. Ports are very cheap to pile out. Masks are very cheap to pile out. So, um, doesn't look like we're going to find it here. Um, so again, here I'm just trashing two coppers, and buying um, something. I'm not quite sure what I want to buy. Uh, with four, I think it's too dangerous to buy ports. Uh, I probably just buy a. I probably do buy the ports, although the colony points are out, so I probably buy nothing. <laughs> although your opponent doesn't have as many grand markets as you, so you're not that worried about the pile out. And here you can pass the stone mason. Yeah, after both players had big turns last turn, these were a little bit more sad turns. Uh, you know, just the decks regressing to the mean. Um, if you draw your ports, and your masks at the top of your shuffle, you can play the ports, then the masks and draw through. Um, if you don't draw, if you don't see all the ports and masks near the top of your shuffle, you're not gonna not gonna find it. Yeah, Tra trashing is important. Uh, is a good lesson. So. Again, what does it take to pile out here? Um, six money, eight money to empty the stone masons. Ooh, tough. Uh, eight money to empty the stone masons. 
and then somehow you have to get four masquerades, four fishermen. So like if you stone mason a masquerade, you get two masquerades. Um, so then it takes, you know, 13 money to pile out, which is probably out of reach, but for either player at this point, but, um, I think k best draw there could have done it. Um, both players played their masquerades and drew two action cards, which is kind of what we expect at this point. Patron. Yeah, maybe the patron's a little late, but obviously I've been liking the patron since the beginning. We'll see here. I think um, Jackal needs to pause here and think a little bit. Um, they can stone mason this gold into two somethings, and probably they don't have a win yet, though, so they just need to play on. Um, I would not play the port yet, um, because you might want to stone mason into two masquerades. Um, we are fairly close to Jackdaw having a win if they were to have done that. I believe actually this would have been win in hand if they played the Fisherman first. They could have stone mason the Fisherman into two masquerades and they would have had uh, 14 money, which is enough to empty out the stone masons and masquerades. Um, someone can check my math on that. There's only one person here, but I believe that math is correct. They had a win. If they play the Fisherman first, then they could stone mason the and then the Grand Market, they could stone mason the port into two masquerades. They would have had eight, nine, 15 money, um, and they would have had a win in hand. Um, oh no. I think they still had a win in hand with stone masoning that fisherman. They still have a win in hand. It's still there. Stone mason, double mask, stone mason, double mask. Oh no, they're short two. It's short two. They would have needed one more money. Stone Mason double yeah, if they if they trash the fisherman in two masquerades, this was a win in hand. Um whatever turn this is 13. Um I don't yeah. I guess they had a win in hand, so that this is strictly worse, but like I honestly prefer a province there over all those silvers. Their deck just got really bad. Um they do have enough points now that it's gonna be pretty hard for, for Keitra to to catch up, but we'll see if they can find some masks, get get the draw going. And we're trashing, we're trashing coppers. We're still at the point of trashing coppers, even though we're heavy into the greens. Uh, it's going to be almost impossible for for, for Kaitra to find the win now with uh, with the nine VP deficit. But I think now they just build forever and say my opponent's deck just got a lot worse. Pass. Um, oh yeah, they still have curses. Um, just keep drawing, Let's see what we get, play the patron, play the stonemason, um, so do they want to double province? I think I don't want to double province here, I think I want to thin the copper, I want to buy a single province, and something, like a single province and a single grand market, um, I can also believe double province here. They were able to trash two this turn, but again, this is a lot of their good stuff. It's going to be a little bit tougher to do this next turn. Um, they've got some grand markets down there. Um, they've got a mask. No more ports, I don't think, but they've got a mask and a villager. So double province. Uh, again, I feel like I I'm making a principled stand and say, you just added six stop cards to your deck, Jack. Um, yeah, you just added six stop cards to your deck, and you want drawing deck cleanly before that, so good luck drawing deck now and doing the same thing again. And I'm just going to continue to build, and maybe buy one province and keep building, and then I'll have pileout threats because I'll have a good deck, and you're, you'll be flooded with silvers. I'm not... I'm, not, I'm, not <laughs> I'm saying that flippantly. I don't mean, like, challenging them, but that's sort of the, the... The way I play is I want you to prove to me that your line is better than mine. Um, and I think when you respond by conquesting yourself you're saying oh i'm just going to copy you um from a from a place of being behind a little bit and i think i want to say well I'm, a, I'm ahead so i feel like i'm ahead now even though you technically have more vp so i'm going to diverge as hard as i can from your strategy and go towards my strategy which is um gain a province or two get a little bit of a vp lead and then just empty the, the stunt my and masks
we'll see here. Um, after this game is, is done, I will pull up a, uh, a table with this game ID. Um, and um, to turn, what turn is this? Turn 13 um, to this decision point and show, um, show what I meant um, for, for teaching purposes, if nothing else. Um, it also helps me to prove if I'm right. And obviously practicing these kind of pileups, like there's something to be said for muscle, not, not quite muscle memory, but sort of that memory of like, Hey, there's a stonemason pileup. Let me go actually click it out. And then you get the feel for the kind of board states and textures that, that lead to that, that, um, so stonemason in hand, a card to lower the piles and then piling out using the stonemason trick is, is something you're going to see. Every time Stone Mason is on a kingdom, um, I have lost games. To, I've lost a dozen games to Stone Mason pile out. I've won a dozen games with Stone Mason pile out, maybe more. Um, and you know, if you watch the sort of the masters of this game play it, um, you know, I've seen seen games where where Naismith, for example, is setting up the piles in such a situation that his opponent couldn't actually buy a card from any pile because Naismith had a slight VP lead. And would be able to stone mason pile out every single pile if you bought any cards. So their opponent was just completely hamstrung as to what they can do. Um, and again, I, these golds, these golds are just hurting the decks. It, like I'd prefer on this d d turn to buy a fisherman than to than to have a gold in my discard. And Jack has a lot of money in this starting deck, so there's there's. Quite a potential for this next turn, although again, it, they want to be adding plus buys, and it's hard to find those buys. Wow, Ketra's um, sort of doing what I said. They're making a play. They're saying, I don't think you can empty the piles next turn. Um, so pause here. I think Jack has a win in hand. Stonemason gold for two masks by five stonemasons costs eight. So they've got a pretty easy win in hand here um, after that last move. Um, I don't think they would have had it. Yeah, they wouldn't have had it because they wouldn't have had enough buys. They actually have it two different ways. They can stone mason silver for two stone masons. They can stone mason gold for um, two masquerades here. Um, and they're up by three VP. So that would be the game. We'll see if they spot that. They didn't spot it the first time. Um, obviously, it's one of those like, you know, if you don't spot it the first time, you're just not, you know, you're, you're not primed to look for it. Um, even the best players I've seen have missed missed pileouts. They just don't see it, and then it's not like if we keep yelling in the chat and the commentary for them to see it, they're going to all of a sudden look for it. Um, sometimes it's just not not there in their minds, and uh, they're not going to see it. They're at least pausing here, which is good. Um, so if they don't, if they don't pretend, pretending there wasn't a pile out here uh, with sixteen, I would just buy. Um, man, is there a grand market pile out too? You could stone mason for two grand markets and stone mason for two masquerades. There's a, a different pile out. So assuming we don't go for any of those pile outs, um, then double province here seems completely reasonable. Um, both decks are going to get worse with the inclusion of all the silvers. Um, again, assuming you don't see the pile out. Maybe they're going for last minute Theodom stuff. Like they could gain four silvers, but like the deck just gets so bad. The deck that's going for that, like the, the, the Theodoms don't, don't, don't scale up fast enough. I can just empty provinces or even empty, empty pile outs. They're playing Stone Mason. Exciting here. They trashed a gold. What are they going to pick? Two masks. This could be it. Nicely done. So as I said, they, they re-examined the kingdom, they looked at it again, um, the piles had gotten a little lower, and they were able to spot the pile out. So, so nicely done by, by Jack there, um, figuring out the line. Um, so congrats to them. Um, they won the match uh, three and a half to half. I thought it was closer than that. Um, certainly the match felt closer than that score was. Um, that half game catcher was up the whole time, and even that last game I felt like they were a bit ahead when they lowered the piles a little bit aggressively. Um, so I think that's just something, you know, th this deck state, if you remove these four cards, this is a pretty nice deck here. Um, and you've got these coppers that you can thin. 
uh, and the stone missions. But like th this is a very this is a very nice deck. This is you know purple. Um, similarly here, you know they've got a few extra masks and stone masons from the pile out there. But um, all in all, well played, um, well played by the players. And um, it looks like Jackal's probably going to be uh, moving on to the next um, next round.